Sup everybody, this is Carrick from ACG, and I come to you bash, bruised, and battle-hardened as I bring to you the review for the Blizzard Team FPS Overwatch. This is coming out for the PS4, Xbox One, and of course, the PC. Overwatch tells the tale of a massive military group returning from the ashes of its original destruction to take up arms against a terrorist organization. Now that may sound a lot like a G.I. Joe cartoon, but it's not. In fact, here, story is fairly interesting, but due to the laid-back presentation, there's a good chance you're going to sum it up as Gorilla smashed robot in the face. Oh, and the grill's a scientist because someone decided to give him glasses. And that's fine, because quickly you're going to find out that Overwatch isn't about about leveling up skills and interesting progression. It's about a slim down move set across a massive subset of characters where mustering proper skill use magically elevates to mastering those skills over an undetermined time frame. So let's see if Overwatch is one part awesome, one part Saturday morning cartoon back when they were actually cool, or if it gets lost in its own desire to distill gameplay down to a bare minimum, stripping longevity out in the determined hope for brevity and interesting gameplay up front. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Overwatch. Monkey scientists, robots and their strange affection for pet birds, and laying down enough ordnance to make Iron Man question the total cost. And of course, graphics are up first. You know, whether it's PC, Xbox One, or PS4, one thing about Overwatch is that its absolutely clean art aesthetic combined with subtle but colorful hues means that every location looks absolutely separate and unique from the others. Whether you're fighting across the rooftops of questionably designed Asian pagodas or leaping out of the wrong end of a railway car as you spew a random rain down of missiles from your shoulders, Overwatch just looks amazing through and through. Now on the PS4 and Xbox One, you do see a couple slight drops on the frame rate, but it's really rare with dips under 60. During momentary pauses, you'll sometimes see it, but almost never during any kind of action. But it's Blizzard's overall color use, as I said before, and design of the levels that elevates the title to something else altogether. We've seen countless first-person shooters with more detailed graphics or levels that make more architectural sense, let me tell you that. But like TF2, much of Overwatch's graphical design is about playability while looking amazing and not caring at all about realism or particular scenic or tourism-worthy locations. You know, most games have levels with a particular set piece in them that astounds or an almost, hey, look at me kind of moment in each level. Overwatch instead elevates the entire map to a higher level as a whole, but doesn't really have any of those. Also, one thing you're going to notice right away is the game has a love affair with effects. It's like Blizzard devs look at it and said, you know what, I bet we could put an effect on that effect so we can particle while we particle. Everyone just nodded and they went with it. The sparks from an arc welder that somehow heals also paints the affected character in area a light blue. The muzzle flash of a high caliber weapon climbs the walls of darkened bunker interiors and many times that can give off your exact location. Overwatch may lean towards a cartoony vibe in its presentation that you'll notice right away, but that does not mean there isn't an incredible amount of technical wizardry going on at the same time to sort of solidify the entire artistic representation. But one thing Overwatch has is a solid grasp on the mastery of character design. 21 characters in total with very little artistic overlap, you have a Shikan the Forever Man style killer sweeping eerily across the levels, turning from mist and back to corporeal form with supernatural grace, or the hilariously jilted transformations of a robot bird lover changing from walking leviathan with a gun the size of Nebraska to a mostly immobile tank turret that fires bullets at a speed just above, oh Christ, what just happened? From tanks to healers to builders to hedonistic killers, the artistic design is a masterpiece. Though the game is split between supposed good guys and bad guys, some of the terrorist characters look sweet and innocent, and some of the good guys' military forces give off an MC Hammer vibe of don't touch this at every turn. It's a testament to excellent design that despite overall themes not being exact, the characters' attitudes themselves come out during the gameplay in both animation and just overall color and design work. Now, as a package architecturally stunning, characterized with unique combinations of killers, Overwatch does nail its graphical presentation, and while the consoles don't hold up at all to the PC version, alone and on their own, they look very, very good. Sound, music, and voice. Damage is engaged. Another attack. Play of the 
game. Hey, you know what? Let's do sound first. My hat's off to these guys. It's not just the absolutely stunning use of processing effects that let you hear dangerous foes louder than your comrades as they two-step across the corpses of previous adversaries, or perfectly replicating both action and reaction when 10 people smash together and race to see who can ruin the other person's day quickest. But it's the audio variation in combat that's the key here. Every single character inhabits a small place in the audio spectrum. Within a short amount of time, you're going to be easily able to identify a character's rocket launch attack from Bastion's upgraded turret explosives. It's this separation of various factors that makes sound another arm in Overwatch, and the number of times that reflection or sound occlusion effects saved my life by informing me that an enemy was circling around me while fighting one of my teammates, or just reacting to the heavy thrum of enemy boots. It's countless. With 18 plus hours into the title, I personally think this is some of the best sound in a shooter ever. Every weapon has a suitable low end and trailing effects that are fantastic, like the crackle of ice of a protective barrier, or even better, the rattle of a chain as you're whip pulled across half the level by an enemy sporting a pig t-shirt and a fucking gas mask. Incredible sound. Music. So yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. While mostly noticed in cutscenes, intros, menus, and the beginning setups as you jump into a map, it's suitably themed when you consider this is a story that occasionally sports an Asian bowman and a six-gun wielding cowboy with a Clint Eastwood complex who are then both killed by a peg-legged crazy man with a love for questionably built explosives. A good deal of it's locked in the sort of soaring orchestra affair you would expect from a bigger-than-life title with a lot of violins and horns. But once battle gets hot and heavy, the game and the music dynamically scale down to let you appreciate the sound engine, and I think that's perfect in a title like this. It's really rare that you see this, but the music, unlike someone in game chat, knows when to shut the hell up and let the title speak for itself. Voice. When you think about it, much of a character's design in any game is about the visual presentation, but when voice is present and done well, the overlapping of the two really allow for a cohesive idea of what a character actually is. I mean, who is Clint Eastwood if he doesn't sound like a box of rocks was poured down his throat right after a whiskey? And I really think that's where Overwatch nails it, with various one-liners and comments from the characters throughout the entire gamut of the gameplay, and while attitude and overall design are noticeable on all characters upon the very first time they explode your insides into outsides, it's the voices and voice-overs that cap off the presentation, from the die, die, die of emotionless, already semi-dead hunters, to dwarves wielding guns that are apparently filled with liquid-hot magma as they warn you about what's coming up next. The voices are pitch perfect, and though some are emotionally a bit stunted, it usually fits for whatever character. The amount of vocal and sound feedback in Overwatch is really something to behold. There is a lot, and I can't think of a single thing that really feels like it's too much or, more interestingly, not enough. So, as a package, excellent voice gameplay. You know, Overwatch shares a lot of the ideals of other shooters, but also changes some stuff up. For example, Overwatch's gameplay can best be described as shoot, shoot, move, shoot, duck, duck, run, shoot, move, shoot, shoot, move, 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 shoot, use ultimate, die. While many games do this kind of thing, it's the paring down of all of those specials from other titles that we see in Overwatch, as well as the excellent movement, sort of ties this together. You know, when it comes to movement, this is one of the slickest titles I've ever seen, with little to no input lag, and instead this organic connection between input device and the game registering movement. Now that includes keyboard and mouse on the PC, controller on the PC, or of course, controller on the PS4 and Xbox One. But of course, before you shooty shoot, you gotta get to that point, and that means making a couple choices. Not a lot, mind you, but a couple. First are the modes. You have a couple modes, quick game, game versus the AI, custom game, which unfortunately doesn't give you any experience, and I'll discuss why that sort of bothers me later, in the current special match mode. Regardless of what you pick, you jump into a location after choosing one of 21 characters to battle with. As with most games of this kind, the characters fit roughly into the typical tank healer builder kind of genres that we all expect. Then you jump in and everything in the game either corresponds to capturing and holding locations or escorting the world's slowest moving vehicles from one end of the level to the other like you're teaching Miss Daisy how to drive. And I'm not gonna lie, game types, there's a stunningly low number of them and this will hurt the longevity of the title later on. But you know what? When you jump in, it's the maps and the intricacies of the characters that really make Overwatch so interesting. For example, you don't level up skills in Overwatch at all. In fact, leveling up is 
really fairly rote and usually just means you're going to get a loot box which is filled with various levels of rarity like custom voices, graffitis, or skin choices and sometimes money to buy, well, custom voices, graffiti, and skin choices. What this does is it frees Overwatch from the shackles of in-place upgrades or a great deal of choices during gameplay that slow it down and instead focuses on level design and proper weapon use and of course the defense against others proper weapon use as they try to send you back to whatever strange character factory you came from. For example, you may choose Bastion, who was one of my favorites. He's a half tank, half cumbersome robot, but even his normal weapon hits like a chainsaw on an ice sculpture, killing folks in record time. Now, you switch to the usually immobile secondary form of his, which is a quick twisting tank turret, and you find that your lethality is actually increased exponentially, but you can't move anywhere. Also, transforming takes time, and I've seen excellent players, both enemy and friend alike, take out Bastion easily if they circle around him or stun him. However, in Overwatch, every single shot you shoot gains power on your ultimate skill, and for Bastion, that means that suddenly your tank is mobile. Instead of shooting bullets at bad guys, you're shooting grenades the size of human heads. And really, that's just one more level of Overwatch that shows that appearances can be deceiving. Because what at first appears to be a fairly standard shooter turns into something really unique, as every character has some skill, some unique twist or trait that defies the expected and defines them. It's their ultimates and the correct use of their ultimates, or proper flanking, retreating, and false attacks that makes this title so special. And the fact that some of the characters' movement types, and some of the characters' special attacks, and some of the characters' normal attacks can all adjust those different things. After one match, you're going to probably understand a character's special skills and how the ultimate works. Of course, helped along by a nondescript but ultimately useful HUD. Now, by the second game with that character, you'll pick up just how to aim and use the ultimate. By the third game, you'll start to understand when to use the ultimate. But then, after all that, you're going to begin to capture how the other skills work themselves in, and the most important part of Overwatch, which is when not to fucking use the ultimate. Everyone's ultimate is ultimately powerful, that's where the name comes from, but also they are all in some way detrimental to normal gameplay. And that's the true magic here in Overwatch and something that other titles have not really attempted. For example, Reaper's ultimate is this chanting death spinning march through enemies, but you're insanely open to damage the entire time. Another character has a missile barrage that does almost Robotech levels of damage with spinning misaimed missiles unerringly hitting their targets. But it's the fact that you're stuck in place during it that can mean you die a quarter way through because some archer decided to use your head as a quiver. Even healers have some amazing abilities here, and I have to say that of all the games I have played in the last four to five years, Overwatch's handling of healers has to be some of the most enjoyable ever. From ultimates that allow you to straight up lay hands on folks, returning them from the grave like a feminine version of Altered Beast, to floating monks beating the shit out of their allies by throwing giant metal beads at them that somehow also heal them. Some healers hold their own in enemy combat, others don't, and if they do, they usually have their healing be not as powerful or there is some other balancing caveat hidden within the gameplay strata. I'm also highly impressed by the AI, I just have to say that, and the custom games that you can choose, though again, custom games, when you fill it with AI and even some of your players, you don't get experience for that, and that just sucks. And I get why they did it, they don't want you cheating, but you know what, custom gameplay seems to be the name of the game here, so I wish they would work something out for that. Now sometimes, for whatever reason, it's more fun to jump into a game and learn a character or a level by fighting the AI versus a bunch of riddling riddled preteens with supernatural reaction times, and of course, no understanding of what team chat is. And what I like about it is you can basically just jump into an AI game after choosing easy, medium, or hard difficulty. Now, Blizzard's done their best with the AI, making characters feel organically human, despite being backed up by Skynet-level thinking ability. The only issue I did have with the AI is that watching kill cams really shows you that unlike a human that has to understand and learn the environment or glean onto audio or visual cues using senses, the AI has no such requirements. I've seen one AI character flip perfectly between four enemies with absolutely zero lock-on and yet perfectly kill each one in a row of death conveyor belt kind of styles. I would have liked to have seen a more robust feature set of abilities from the AI that showed progression in all the aspects of the gameplay, versus of course just being able to instantly send someone behind them who's absolutely not moving, but somehow they twist and shoot them in the eye like the arrow. Games like Overwatch have always had different modes of success depending on their structure. Overwatch has chosen a small feature set with a dramatic amount of caveats as you're progressively using more powerful attacks, but it's lodged that firmly in some of the most labyrinthian, downright insidious level designs I've ever seen. Nowhere is safe. 
nowhere. Climb onto a roof, think you're safe? Nope. If you're not sniped off with the absolute soul-crushing speed at which enemies can move, or by someone giving you a death hug with a chain and hook, then you're exploded into gooey bits by rockets, grenades, or otherwise. Overwatch is about accurate movement, accurate use of skills, and to excel, being a keen judge of proper use of everything that you can as a weapon. One thing I like about this is everything's measured and calculated, and at the end of the match, you get an EXP for almost everything you do, personal best, most kills, and so forth. There's also a game vote for the best player at the end of the game as well. When you level up, not much really changes, as this game just isn't about that. You usually get at least one loot drop, which, as I said, is a box that you open, and it gives you four random items. These are all cosmetic or auditory, so don't expect to find an enemy kill killer plus four in these drops. Instead, you're liable to get items for characters you'll never use, closing animations, poses, and emotes, and a ton of duplicates. This is where I think some gamers may actually feel that the game rubs them raw a little bit. I'm going to be very honest here. After many hours with the beta, and now over 14 with the final retail version, I'm already feeling a good bit of been there, done that. While the levels are extra careful to make sure that there are always avenues for almost any kind of strategy, you still do find yourself repeating a good deal of the same combat moves in the same area. Also, with no tangible unlocks, going up a level can be stunningly bare bones, especially when you find yourself getting four voiceovers for characters you don't give a shit about anyway. There are some stunning oddities as well, like group choices changing on the PC if you plug in a controller. For some reason, if you do, then you suddenly lose the option to leave a game as a group. Yes, even on the PC. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but having to form and reform groups whenever you want to open a loot box is next level special, and really not in a good way. Also, I have to say there are more bugs than I really expected, even with a group I found myself playing with, only to randomly be shot out of that game at light speed to be sent into a completely different game without any EXP or or payoff. Now this isn't a skirmish situation. This was in a full battle with others in a group and then boom, no warning, I was joining another game without any actual game disconnection of any kind. Now a number of users have reported this on both consoles and PC, so it's definitely happening. This could be a soft disconnect, let's say on the Blizzard side of things, or a bug. And what's nice is the reverse was true. I jumped into a bunch of battles right at the end and got a bunch of experience points for winning the battle on my side, even though I had shot maybe one or two people and one time hadn't killed anybody but I still at least got a couple winning points for that. It was very odd. I think this could be a situation where we'll see those fixed in the next coming weeks. But for me, the most important aspect of this entire thing is the plain and simple fact that multiplayer was quick, easy to jump into, and there was absolutely no lag. Fun factor. So Overwatch has an incredible ramp up in the first couple hours, and even if you're doing poorly or don't get the gist of a particular character in a game, it rewards you for switching identities every time you die to someone else that suits you or the new situation on the battlefield better. However, with the stunningly low number of game modes and that issue I stated with leveling up, I admit that the fun factor wore off. As you go along, and while the lack of appreciable skills is a boon to learning the character, for many, the abilities may not be enough in the long run. I would have loved maybe choosing some ability are outfitting the characters versus everyone having the same ones as well. It's a difficult choice that Blizzard has made, and while certainly paying off at first, I'm not so sure, for me personally, if it's going to continue to pay off many hours down the road. So, as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. And of course, even though I've spent many hours now with the retail title, more than enough to indicate if it pays itself off or not, this could technically be considered a review in progress because I will continue to visit this title for a while. So this is actually a buy. I can say this, most gamers are gonna get their money's worth and then some from Overwatch easily. While longevity may suffer, that will be a good deal of time after your return on investment has completely paid off. Jumping from character to character is super rewarding, purely by design, and that means a ton of interaction with the roster in a genre where that's not actually always true. However, and I just have to say this, I personally can't lie. I don't see myself returning to this again and again later on. But at the same time, there are very few games of this kind that pay off this well during the initial hours in which your purchase is really being reflected in your enjoyment of the title. It's a damn fine game. It's not a classic though, far from it but it is very enjoyable. And for something like, say, eSports, the overall way the game is set up and the playability, I think this is really gonna see the cream rise to the top. And really, that's what Overwatch was made to show and to demonstrate. So as always, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out the Patreon, the Reddit, what have you. As always, trying to get you guys good reviews in a good amount of time. Peace out.